Hey guys, we got this 803944 that just came to the shop. I'm Brent. I purchased my first 924S nearly 20 years ago. I later turbocharged it and restored it from the ground up, so I know these cars inside and out. Not only do I daily drive them, but I've taken them cross country. I found an address so that everyone could build the 944 of their dreams. It doesn't matter whether you're looking to restore your car or just make it more reliable, you've come to the right place. So grab your tools and let's get started. It isn't every day that we get a great story with one of these cars, so I thought I'd share it with you guys. I'm gonna paraphrase a bit, but basically the owner of this car had reached out to me after seeing a few of my videos and asked me if I was interested in getting his 944 running again. It'd been sitting for about 14 years or so, and originally was his mother's car who had bought it brand new back in 1983. She daily drove it for about four or five years and he had a lot of great memories in this car. When he was older, he took ownership of it where it came to live with him, and around 2006, it refused to start one day, so it sat in the garage ever since. He always wanted to have it fixed, not only for himself, but for his family. So once we have it running again, he's gonna surprise his siblings with it so they can all take a ride in mom's car once again. All right, we got it up on ramps now, and they're gonna start breaking everything down. All right, they've already got the belt covers off, so next we're gonna remove the front crank bolt. We got the rear belt cover off now. Next, I'm gonna remove the water pump. This here is how they found the timing belt. It was ready to break in two. We got this car broken down now. It did have the updated 6R oil cooler and the updated OPRV. So the next thing we're gonna do is get this sprocket off here and then we can remove this and replace the seal. Then we can get all these seals back on and put it back together. We got the oil cooler apart now. And as I mentioned, the housing's already been upgraded to the 6R. So the only thing we gotta do is put some new gaskets in and get it back together as we were taking it apart we found that one of the shims had been crimped and bent like that. So you gotta be careful when you're installing this that this does not happen. We got the new seals on the oil cooler, so we're gonna get it back in. All right, we got the oil cooler back on, so next we'll get the OPRV and the sender back on. All right, I got the oil cooler and the front main seal in now, so next we're gonna install the new water pump. Water pump's on now, so next we're gonna install the oil filter. We got the belt cover on now, so next we'll get the belts installed. They're getting the new spark plugs in now. Back here, they've already pulled the air oil separator and replaced the seals. While it was out, they went ahead and replaced the sensors as well. Sorry guys, we got the new spark plugs and the wires on, but I spoke with the owner yesterday and he said it was probably a good idea for us to go ahead and take the head off and have it refreshed. So that's what we're gonna do today. Getting ready to remove the cam tower now. I've got the cam tower off and now they're removing the headers. All right, we're getting ready to take the head off now. All right, we got the head off and it looks good. These cylinders look pretty good as well. You can 
see that this is an original head gasket, so it was a good choice of him to want to go ahead and replace it. All right, we've got the head loaded up, and we're going to take it to the machine shop. New head gaskets installed, so next I'll put the head on. I've got the head on, next we'll install the cam tower. I've got the head and the cam tower back on now, so next I'll install the belts. They've got the fuel drained out now, and here's a look at the strainer and the sender. I don't know about you, but this is definitely the worst ones I've ever seen. And over here's how the fuel look. So he's already replaced the sender. Next he's going to put the new strainer and fuel filter in. So while he's doing that, I'm going to install the new belts and get the intake back on. All right, they're gonna get the car up today and start looking at the brakes. If nothing else, we need to get this old nasty fluid out of the system. We've got this caliper freed up now, but it looks like we're gonna have to rebuild the brakes. While we're waiting on brake parts, we figured we'd go ahead and try and start this car up. All right, so we got some fresh oil in there and we tried turning it over a few times, but unfortunately, despite having a new fuel strainer, a new fuel filter, and having the injectors cleaned, the fuel pump had stopped working. And we tested three of these here and none of them worked. So he went ahead and ordered one, but doesn't look like it's gonna fit. So once I return that, we should have this car fired up. And in the meantime, we're gonna finish rebuilding the brakes. All right, we got the brakes apart and we got the cylinders honed. Everything looks good, so we're gonna start rebuilding them. All right, we've got the brakes rebuilt now, so TJ's gonna get them on. All right, the new pads are on and we also got all that nasty fluid out of the system. That's it right there. Yes, sir. All right, all the brakes are rebuilt, so next we're gonna bleed them. All right guys, we got the calipers rebuilt. We also have the brakes bled now. So the next thing we're gonna do is start it up. We got a replacement fuel pump in here, and we also replaced the strainer and the filter. We rebuilt the injectors, and we topped off the oil, so everything is ready to start up. So I'll take you over here. We're gonna check and see if we're getting oil pressure and if this thing will fire up. So let's watch the oil pressure here. Oh, that looks good. Let's see if that's a real reading. So we saw that it jumped to five and then it falls down. Looks like it's sticking a little bit. But as long as we're getting five bar and we're getting an actual reading so it's not just turning over there when I turn the switch on as you can see here it's only jumping the five once the car started but as you can see the car isn't staying running hmm all right so I'm thinking this has something to do with the ignition switch here so I'll try and start it up and yeah it stays running if I just hold it over here but not enough to keep the starter engaged so you can hear that the starter is not engaged and the car is running it actually sounds pretty good but as soon as I let go of this key and it goes into the on position it stops so this is an ignition switch issue I'll do it again so start it up release it just enough to get the starter to disengage and if I hold it here, the car is running perfectly. Plenty of oil pressure. But as soon as it goes into the on position when I release it, it dies. So what we're going to do is get a new ignition switch installed here. And we should be done with this car. 
All right, guys, I think we're ready to start this car up. As you can see, it's been a very long time since it's been on the road. And what I've done here is just taken an ignition switch out of another car and got it plugged in. If this starts the car, then we'll replace the ignition switch and we should be ready to go here. So let's give it a try. Oh yes, car started right up. This ignition switch is working perfectly. Now let's go around here and see how it sounds. Sounds pretty good. Cable stick a little bit, but not bad. So I'm gonna let the engine idle up the temperature. As you can see now, there's a little bit of smoke coming off the headers, which is pretty normal whenever you do any work with these cars. And as you can see, the oil pressure still looks fantastic, as well as the temperature. And what I'm gonna do is see if the fans kick on. Once they do, I'll go ahead and install a new ignition switch and we'll be ready to drive this car. All right, so the fans just kicked on and it was over towards the third mark, but not all the way when they kicked on. And as you can see, it's already down to the second mark, which is fantastic. Both fans are running and the temperature dropped almost immediately before I could even get my phone out. So. That's great news. Now we'll get the ignition switch in and we're gonna see if we can take this car out on the road. All right, I've got the replacement switch in now and everything is working properly with the original key. This is the switch that I removed from the car and I've seen quite a few failures with these switches before. And this car, as you saw, the car would start up and run just fine so long as it didn't go back into the on position where the car should run. And another issue that I had was that the car would start up and run occasionally, but sometimes the starter wouldn't even turn over and replacing the switch fix that issue as well and in another car the car would start up and run perfectly fine but whenever you remove the key it would not turn the accessories off and therefore run the battery dead and replacing the switch in all three of those cases was the fix and so it's always good to just go in and replace these they're about 10 bucks and there are probably more issues that you can get out of these things, but those are the three that I've seen. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and get this back together and hopefully we can drive this car. All right guys, everything's back together now, so let's fire her up. We got this car here on its first test drive. Everything looks and sounds good. This car has not ran in a very long time. We need to get it washed up. And then we'll bring it back down here and get some nicer shots of it. But as for now, let's see, temperature gauge is perfect, oil pressure is perfect. Sounds good idling here. We go up underneath here. No leaks. And everything is still nice and clean up here, really clean. So. Looks like we just got to get her washed up and she'll be ready to go home.
There she is, all cleaned up and ready to go home. This car went home a while ago and the owner since kept in touch. He was able to surprise his family and take them on a long overdue ride. He's also sent me some pictures of some of the events he's attended and all the places that he's gone. All right, guys, that's just about going to do it for this video. Be sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. If you'd like us to work on your 944, just send me an email at address at gmail.com and I'll get back to you. If you'd like to stay up to date with some of the projects working on around the shop, be sure to join us on Facebook. I'll leave a link in the description below. I also want to thank everyone who supports this channel on Patreon since these videos would not be possible without you. If you'd like to become a Patreon supporter and see videos that you can't see anywhere else, I'll also leave a link down there as well. But anyway, guys, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time.